He also told this parable to some who trusted in themselves, that they were righteous and looked down on everyone else. Two men went up to the temple complex to pray, one a Pharisee and the other a tax collector. The Pharisee took his stand and was praying like this, God, I thank you that I'm not like other people, greedy, unrighteous, adulterers, or even like this tax collector. I fast twice a week. I give a tenth of everything I get. But the tax collector, standing far off, would not even raise his eyes to heaven, but kept striking his chest and saying, God, turn your wrath from me, a sinner. I tell you, this one went down to his house justified rather than the other, because everyone who exalts himself will be humble, but the one who humbles himself will be exalted. At that time, the disciples came to Jesus and said, Who is greatest in the kingdom of heaven? Then he called a child to him and had him stand among them. I assure you, he said, unless you are converted and become like children, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. Therefore, Whoever humbles himself like this child, this one is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven. And whoever welcomes one child like this in my name, welcomes me. But whoever causes the downfall of one of these little ones who believe in me, it would be better for him if a heavy millstone were hung around his neck and he were drowned in the depths of the sea. The Jewish festival of tabernacles was near. So his brothers said to him, Leave here and go to Judea so your disciples can see your works that you are doing. For no one does anything in secret while he's seeking public recognition. If you do these things, show yourself to the world. For not even his brothers believed in him. Jesus told them, My time has not yet arrived, but your time is always at hand. The world cannot hate you, but it does hate me because I testify about it, that its deeds are evil. Go up to the festival yourselves. I am not going up to the festival yet because my time has not yet fully come. After he had said these things, he stayed in Galilee. After his brothers had gone up to the festival, then he also went up, not openly, but secretly. The Jews were looking for him at the festival and saying, Where is he? And there was a lot of discussion about him among the crowds. Some were saying, He's a good man. Others were saying, No, on the contrary, He's deceiving the people. Still, nobody was talking publicly about him because they feared the Jews. When the festival was already half over, Jesus went up into the temple complex and began to teach. Then the Jews were amazed and said, How does he know the scriptures since he hasn't been trained? 
Jesus answered them, My teaching isn't mine, but is from the one who sent me. If anyone wants to do his will, he will understand whether the teaching is from God or if I am speaking on my own. The one who believes in me believes not in me, but in him who sent me. And the one who sees me sees him who sent me. I have come as a light into the world, so that everyone who believes in me would not remain in darkness. If anyone hears my words, and doesn't keep them. I do not judge him, for I did not come to judge the world, but to save the world. The one who rejects me and doesn't accept my sayings has this as his judge. The word I have spoken will judge him on the last day. For I have not spoken on my own, but the Father himself who sent me has given me a command as to what I should say and what I should speak. I know that his command is eternal life. So the things that I speak, I speak just as the Father has told me. Some of the people of Jerusalem were saying, Isn't this the man they want to kill? Yet look, he's speaking publicly and they're saying nothing to him. Can it be true that the authorities know he is the Messiah? But we know where this man is from. When the Messiah comes, nobody will know where he is from. As he was teaching in the temple complex, Jesus cried out, You know me, and you know where I am from. Yet I have not come on my own, but the one who sent me is true. You don't know him. I know him because I am from him, and he sent me. However, Many from the crowd believed in him and said, When the Messiah comes, he won't perform more signs than this man has done, will he? When some from the crowd heard these words, they said, This really is the prophet. Others said, This is the Messiah. But some said, Surely the Messiah doesn't come from Galilee, does he? Doesn't the scripture say that the Messiah comes from David's offspring and from the town of Bethlehem, where David once lived? So a division occurred among the crowd because of him. The Pharisees heard the crowd muttering these things about him. So the chief priests and the Pharisees sent temple police to arrest him. Then they tried to seize him. Yet no one laid a hand on him because his hour had not yet come. Then the temple police came to the chief priests and Pharisees who asked them, Why haven't you brought him? The police answered, no man ever spoke like this. Then the Pharisees responded to them, Are you fooled too? Have any of the rulers believed in him? Or any of the Pharisees? But this crowd which doesn't know the law is accursed. Nicodemus, the one who came to him previously, being one of them said to them, our Lord doesn't judge a man before it hears from him and knows what he's doing, 
does it? You aren't from Galilee too, are you? They replied. Investigate and you will see that no prophet arises from Galilee. As Jesus left and was going out of the temple complex, his disciples came up and called his attention to the temple buildings. Then he replied to them, Don't you see all these things? I assure you, not one stone will be left here on another that will not be thrown down. While he was sitting on the Mount of Olives, the disciples approached him privately and said, Tell us, when will these things happen? And what is the sign of your coming and of the end of the age? And Jesus replied to them, Watched out that no one deceives you, for many will come in my name, saying, I am the Messiah and they will deceive many. You are going to hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that you are not alarmed, because these things must take place, but the end is not yet. For nation will rise up against nation, and kingdom against kingdom. There will be famines and earthquakes in various places, all these events are the beginning of birth pains. Then they will hand you over for persecution, and they will kill you. You will be hated by all nations because of my name. Then many will take offense, betray one another, and hate one another. Many false prophets will rise up, and deceive many because lawlessness will multiply the love of many will grow cold but the one who endures to the end will be delivered this good news of the kingdom will be proclaimed in all the world as a testimony to all nations and then the end will come For those will be days of tribulation, the kind that hasn't been from the beginning of the world, which God created until now and never will be again. Unless the Lord limited those days, no one would survive. But He limited those days because of the elect whom He chose. Then if anyone tells you, Look, here is the Messiah. Look, there, do not believe it. For false messiahs and false prophets will rise up and will perform signs and wonders to lead astray, if possible, the elect. And you must watch. I have told you everything in advance, but in those days, after that tribulation, the sun will be darkened and the moon will not shed its light. The stars will be falling from the sky and the celestial powers will be shaken. 